Hi, John Sanders. We're going to be talking today about Medicare Advantage plans. Let me kind of get that screen updated here and uh, we'll just kind of move on. Uh, don't forget, show up 15 minutes early, see some cool videos and some good training. And also, please don't forget, why am I bouncing around here? That's kind of crazy. There we go. There we go. Don't forget about our Agent Forum, okay? Uh, Agent Forum is a great place to ask questions, get answers to those questions, and please, as agents, that should be our first step. We'll be sure to answer it. The thing with a phone call is you'll ask a question, you get the information, that's it. You don't get to share it. No one else who may have that same question gets that same answer. And in short, um, you know, we might be answering that same question 10 times. No big deal. That's our job. However, the thing is, is that maybe somebody else may chime in a, a more descriptive answer or add to that answer. And when you use the forum, it's a win-win for everybody. Hey, let's talk about moving forward in 2021. We do want you to move forward. And the best way to do it is to make the stretch. And the stretch may be marketing Medicare. Last week, we talked about the Medicare basics. This week, we're talking about Medicare Advantage, and let's just do it to coin the Nike uh, motto, but make a stretch. Consider the options. There are a lot of options for generating income out there, and either you're going to make it or you're not. Also, plan on growing. Every single day that we grow, we have to learn something new. I have a friend that says, John, my wife told me I can only speak 50 words a day, and I'm already at 30. And I think you're already, already at 30. So he blew three of those words, okay? So plan on growing every day because that's our purpose here. If we're not growing, we're dying. Also, team. Team here at Apex Insurance Group, we offer a spectacular base of knowledge. Ron is super. As far, and he actually cares when he conducts his training and helping individuals, not unlike me. I do care also, too. But Ron really takes a, a deep, deep interest in training. And then also Brian Bell, our partner here with us for the Medicare programs, he's supreme at his level of knowledge. And it takes a while to know and to grow and to team. Moving on, let's talk about the Medicare Advantage plan. Now, Medicare components are A, B, C, and D. And today we're going to be talking about uh, Part C of the Medicare Advantage program. Simply, here are the advantages and the disadvantages. Uh, probably the most advantageous of everything is they are convenient, and some include prescription drug plans. You can't beat that. And enrollments are not affected by health or financial status. This becomes very important, very important. I know a lot of other plans uh, in life and different types of insurance do look at your financial status, look at your health status, and this is basically without regard to any health or financial statuses. So these are the advantages and disadvantages. Here's something that we need to understand, that the Medicare Advantage plans, they are privatized Medicare. They are basically yearly replacements for parts A and B, which are hospitalization and doctor's visits. Also, there's no premium collected at sales, and there is no underwriting, generally no underwriting. I want to explain that generally no underwriting and there are low and no premium plans. Now, the reason I say that there are low and no premium plans is depending upon the zip code area or the county actually where you live will determine the rates that are for uh, the rates that you'll pay or your customers will pay for a Medicare Advantage plan. Also, the co-payments are predictable. They're outlined up front. You, the, your client will know what they are. And as a matter of fact, they'll get a letter, uh, they'll get a card that it will explain their benefits and their costs at shortly after the time of sale. Um, there's preventative plans where there's no out-of-pocket costs. And finally, 
Uh, well, not even finally, but they have maximum out-of-pocket expenses. I know in my personal health plan, one of the things that uh, that I have every year is I hit my, I completely use my deductible. And as long as I've had health insurance, I have hammered my deductible every single year. So at least we know what the maximum will be. Also, there's county by county basis, and I alluded to that earlier because different counties, the cost is different. I work, well, pardon me, I shop, I do everything in Tulsa County, yet I live in Osage County. So when Betty, my wife, who just is, uh, is on Medicare, um, who qualified for Medicare last year, Um, we selected a plan in Osage County, even though in this direction, this way, whichever, I guess it's that way on the camera, uh, it's five miles down the road is the next county. So that's something that we need to all be aware that it's on county by county. And also beginning this year, uh, beneficiaries uh, with ESRD are going to be enrolled in the Medicare Advantage uh, drug plans. Or MAPDs. Let's take a look here at the difference between the HMO and the PPO plans. You know, this is one of the general health questions that we had as life and health agents. What's the difference between an HMO and a PPO? Don't need to necessarily go into that any more than we have to. But let's talk about uh, HSAs. So HSAs are those high deductible insurance plans, and it is Oh, this is probably more like a catastrophic health plan, but uh, this plan begin at once. The yearly high deductible is met, and then they do vary, but you also team it with a medical savings plan, okay? So if you have individuals looking for something like this, uh, you know, you might want to ask why and have them look at it, but they're similar uh, they're similar to HSAs outside of the Medicare plan. We also want to look at special need planning or special need plans. That may be a little bit different overall, but there are three different plans or there's three different types of special need plans. One is chronic, the next is institutional, and then the dual eligible. I do happen to have a friend. I know that for some that's, uh, that's probably... Uh, surprising for some, but I do have a plan that a friend who is eligible for both Medicare and Medicaid, and consequently, uh, they are the dual eligible. But also, if you have someone with a chronic condition, AIDS, ARCing, uh, HIV, chronic heart failure, and I've got a friend who that's also under chronic heart failure, one of the things is is they then become a dual eligible, or they are under a special needs plan. Okay. If you need to know anything more about this, then of course we've got Brian Bell, who's a partner with us, that will talk to you, uh, is extremely, extremely knowledgeable about the Medicare program. You know, we hear about the donut hole. We hear about the donut hole all the time on television. The older I get, the more I tend to watch like the Hallmark Channel and the Cowboy Channel and the Western Channel and TV land and, and all those things set up for us old people. And, um, and we hear about when a person hits the donut hole. So there's four stages to the donut hole, or basically stage three is the donut hole, but you've got a deductible stage, an initial. You end up with the, the donut hole stage. That's the point where you fall in between the two coverages of initial and catastrophic. And um, every year, the deductibles, the initial coverage limits, and the cat- catastrophic limits change. So um, y- we also need to be, pre- pardon me, we need to be prepared when we discuss with people their Medicare planning options and the Medicare Advantage plans, how the donut hole will be affected because it can be extremely costly for someone who misjudges a plan and what. Uh, what financial obligations might be there. Another thing that we need to truly understand, we've heard often in the media, a lot of political parties make hay over this, it's the prescription drug plans. And even some folks that have some special 
uh, special drug plans or special drugs that they need to take that they can only take name brand drugs uh, kind of need to understand the prescription drug plan through the, the Medicare program. Also, veterans. There's tons and tons of veterans that are out there, and um, we need to know how the VA plays into the prescription drug plan. I'm a veteran. Even though I am not on Medicare, I blow the top off the maximum uh, income for uh, drugs, okay, through the VA channel. Prescription uh, beneficiaries not enrolling in Part D when first eligible. This is an important thing that uh, one of the agents I was talking to told me about how his father-in-law did not understand that uh, they should have enrolled directly. And they went on for like five years, five years of 1% uh, enrollment penalty for late enrollment. And... Um, and that's, uh, that gets to be pretty expensive. Now, um, and here's some of the rules concerning that and the benchmarks and also to understand that that penalty is permanent. Permanent. See, here's the unique thing about marketing Medicare Advantage and Medicare uh, drug plans is the fact that at age 65, it's like an automatic. Someone's going to have to buy something. Now, not everybody's going to buy life insurance. Not everybody's going to have a need for annuity. But everybody who's a citizen is going to end up with a prescription, well, with a Medicare plan, okay? That's just part of it. And uh, they may be uh, uh, SN, uh, well, they may be under a special needs plan, but they'll either be a Medicaid, Medicare, or they're going to end up qualifying for Medicare. I'd say that for about 99.6% of the people. And the thing is, is get them enrolled at age 65. Hear, hear me again. Get them enrolled at age 65 and then annually go back and look at the plans. Here's Let's take a look at some of the costs as far as for the breakdown under a Medicare prescription drug plan. We need to understand that not all drugs are going to be covered. Uh, Betty, my wife, n requires a brand name drug and not a generic. And however, uh, we had to run it through our drug plan in order for her to be picked up and to get prescription drug plan coverage. But there are certain costs and deductibles associated for that. Let's also take a look at the formularies, okay? Drug formularies are set up by every uh, insurance companies, and uh, you can read along here, but a formulary is how a carrier implements the various drugs that it will offer underneath the program and generally there is a generic and a name brand drug under each one of the formularies and and this is all managed under the Medicare the CMS um, you know the Center for Medicare Services uh, the things that are uh, not always covered now understand um, one of the carriers does offer erectile dysfunction um, drugs beginning in this year, but generally they weren't covered. It's kind of weird. Maybe prisoners can get them, but Medicare people can't. I don't know. That was a joke, folks. Don't don't email me on that. But anyway, of course, uh, barbiturates and weight loss drugs and those kind of things are not covered under the formularies. Uh, as we're moving on, let's also take a look here that uh, Medicare eligible or Medicare mandates guidelines concerning these drugs. So it's actually, again, the Medicare program is mandating it and every plan will de develop its own formularies and Medicare has excluded some types of drugs. However, again, like the, the erectile dis, uh, dysfunction drugs, uh, some carriers can go ahead and and implement those on their own. Some formulary restrictions are step therapies, prior authorizations. In my wife's case, we had to outline the prior, auth uh, we had to get the, uh, we didn't have time to get 
the prior authorization, but my wife was under a step therapy plan where she tried a couple of different uh, generic drugs that did not provide the result that she was looking for uh, and the desired outcome based upon that drug and had to move then on to a name brand drug. And um, so that's something to think about. Also, let's take a look here. For those, for the low-income subsidies, now generally this is not always going to be the Medicaid people, but just low income. We've got some special rules for those folks here. And the qualifications are relatively simple. You can see that, um, that they are really low income, plain and simple. It's just extra help. That's all we're saying is that under the Medicare low income subsidy program, that medic extra help is being offered. Let's take a look and uh, at the annual enrollment period, and that is from October 15th to December 7th, okay? Um, and all annual enrollment premiums uh, or plans uh, are effective on the 1st of January. Bottom line here, folks, let me, let me say this. Bottom line is if we do, we're talking to you today about the Medicare plan because I want agents to start thinking about it today. It takes a number of months to work your way through all of the training, the agent appointments that you have to go through, making sure that you are appointed and all of your appointment fees. Unlike insurance carriers, you do pay appointment fees. And uh, so we're talking about it today so we can talk about annual enrollment period down the road. But the other thing, a annual enrollment period is very much like a... Um, a wild animal kill out on the Serengeti. It's just an absolute feeding frenzy. Well, it's actually more like stepping into the water in the Amazon and letting the piranha eat on you. Uh, I mean, it's just a feeding frenzy. Things just go absolutely crazy. Ads go on television. Agents are running around because that is the one time of year that they know that, that they can typically make a ton of money. So I'm saying, hey, look, every day 11,000 new people turn age 65. That's plenty of people for the other nine months out of the year, 10 months out of the year that there is not an annual enrollment period. So let's kind of just move on uh, beyond that. Um, also, let's take a look here. The open enrollment period is immediately after the annual enrollment period, and it runs January 1st through the 31st. This is where folks can add or drop Part D, and if they're enrolled in a Medicare Advantage uh, prescription drug pro program, um, you know, they can do that. Also, it's uh, MA, uh, MAPD or an MA only, original Medicare with or without Part D. That's the annual, or pardon me, that's the open enrollment period. So they roll from annual into the open, okay? Next, let's talk about the effective dates for the Medicare Advantage open enrollment period. It's the first of the month following the receipt of the enrollment request. And I'll tell you what, the carriers have got this down. It works, and it works well, especially when I rolled Betty's over. Only one change can be made per annual enrollment period. The open enrollment period will not allow movement between the original Medicare to enroll in an MA or, a, or Part D changes. And it's not available for those high-cost plans. Okay? Let's move on next to the SEPs. So change, um, it's provided, uh, provided to change coverage outside of the annual enrollment period or the open enrollment periods you have to meet some requirements to qualify and timing is situationally based so if you have a special need program it can change and they can switch uh, once each of the three calendar quarters of the year so an individual can change if they're under a special needs program Let's jump into this um, little grid here. Part A, 
An individual can enroll at 64 nine months or otherwise eligible in Part B. They have a seven-month window. C, they have a seven-month window. And the thing that we need to understand is that higher, you know, just take a look at it. We don't want to be late. We do not want to be late in helping these people enroll in either Medicare Advantage programs uh, at all and even a prescription drug plan. So you want to be on it. Again, like I say, 11,000 people every day turn 65. Let's talk about your path to success. They, you know, we need needs analysis every time we talk. We need to do a benefit review, a statement of understanding. Again, we also need to make sure that we clarify and conform to the uh, Medicare um, the, and, and make people understand and confirm that Medicare Advantage is not uh, is not a supplement. It is its own program. It's designed to replace A and B. Also, we need to correct, uh, complete the correct plan with correct information. Uh, a list of clients' drugs is a must. And I'll tell you what, when you sit down with somebody, sit down with them to bring their entire list of drugs. Now, we also have software that we can do a lookup under the uh, Center for Medicare Services, and we can actually find out individuals' drugs that they're on. And you can deal with uh, either Ron or I, or we can call Brian Bell. You can discuss it with Brian Bell. They also must know their physician information. Uh, why is that important? Well, because we need to see if their physician is in the plan or outside the plan, complete a review with the beneficiary, and then immediately submit after a signature is secured. After the sale, we need to call the beneficiary to verify the ID card is received. That could take 10 to 14 days, and then we need to run uh, interference if they don't get it and figure out why. If needed, review the benefits throughout the year with the individual because remember, you'll want to go back the next year and re-enroll them. Always promptly return any communication to the individual. Folks, I cannot begin to un, uh, explain enough that as professional insurance agents, we need to go back and talk to clients that have questions. I know of an, uh, of an insurance agent that uh, he would sell plans and then would just literally ghost off of the face of the earth. And even if a client were to call with a question about, hey, where do I mail a check or who do I call or this, that agent would never, would never return a phone call. So that, agents like that are short-lived, but they're out there. Always share with your prospect, with your client, the Medicare options that are available with them. Help them to understand the Medicare Advantage program over original Medicare, um, and, and that will definitely help them understand greatly. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can tell, Medicare and Medicare Advantage is not my first language, okay? I stumble through it because it is not something that I have 20 years of experience, 20 years plus, like I do. I can help you. It is a marvelous program. It is a great income generator for folks that have the greatest of opportunities because of the massive number of people turning age 65 and the turnover every year. Also, don't forget, next week is Ron's uh, webinar, Ron Speaks. Ron Speaks, uh, he always does something that's useful and gets you to think, and Ron is an outstanding teacher. If you have not yet subscribed to the Basic Agent channel, I would request that you do. Go ahead, join. You'll be notified of new web, uh, new 
uh, basic agent videos posted on Saturdays. There's always something there that's uh, of interest to an agent. Ron and I are your agency partners to help you grow and build your business. And that's what we like to do. We like to run and do all the hard stuff for you. So the easy stuff you can do, let us do the hard stuff for you. If you have not registered to be an agent with Apex Insurance Group, I would invite you to do so. I thank you for paying attention today to this video. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to give us a call here at Apex Insurance Group.